Hello people, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you came back, thanks, because honest to God, I realized last Tuesday morning that I didn't film anything or edit anything for Tuesday. Hello, dog. Uh, yeah, so, um, TBR, uh, I have plans, kind of, for July, because despite living in the North, we do get summer here. Um, I hate summer. It's one of the few reasons I enjoy living in the North. Um, otherwise it predominantly sucks. What are you doing? So I plan on staying indoors as much as possible. Thank to God I live in a basement unit and my work is air conditioned and most of the stores are here. So with COVID I shouldn't really be anywhere else. Anyway, so yeah, this is my plan for the month. Um, if you hear noise in the background, you know, you're just deal with it. It's the fan. So starting off this month, I am actually really excited to read A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. I was actually gifted like the whole quartet, I think it is, of this series. And I didn't ever really read the summary and just stared at the weird covers and was like, why did I take these? Like, why? I would, I'm not going to read these. And then I gave them away to someone, to a better home. And then I finally read the summary and I was like, damn it! <laughs> And then I read The Diviner, so I was like, Louis Bray is amazing. So I'm picking up the first book in that quartet, A Great and Terrible Beauty. From what I know, it's set in like the late 1800s, and there's like a diary found. It's supposed to be like a mystery goth set in, I think, India, or at least part of it, or something about the diary is set in India. And I remember being like, oh, so she's probably British then, based on this, like the time and geography of that. So um, I'm super excited. The Diviners is like so freaking good. So I have very high hopes for this one. And everyone that I know that has read The Diviners is like, yeah, this is another good series too. Like it's not like, oh, The Diviners is just way better and this other one was just meh. So hopefully I enjoy this. I am also going to be picking up A Wicked Magic. Honest to God, I never heard of this book until the cover got revealed. And I was like, ooh, it's purple and there's a cat on it interest peaked and then I looked into it and honestly the summary sounds awesome a chilling adventures of Sabrina meets the craft when modern witches must save teens stolen by ancient demons in this YA fantasy thriller debut Dan and Liz are Liz Liz are witches the black book granted them the power harnessing that power feels good especially when everything in their lives makes them feel powerless during a spell gone wrong her boyfriend Liz's boyfriend is snatched away by an evil entity and presumed dead. Dan and Liz's friendship dies that night too. How can they practice magic after the background after the darkness of what happened? Months later, she discovers that her boyfriend is alive and trapped in an underground ancient fortress, which sounds hella cool. I'm very excited, and I think the people that I know have read arcs have been pretty um, like three or four stars realm. So I have pretty high hopes. Hopefully it lives up to it. And honestly, the cover's really pretty. I'm also going to be picking up my arc finally of Star Daughter by Sh Shavita Thakrar. I'm sorry, that's not how to pronounce it. I don't know that there's any point in me reading the summer. I think I've read the summer on this channel like three or four times. Um, I, I love the cover and I feel like that's my thing is like I have for the most part um, steered away from covers that have um, the artwork of uh, Charlie Bowwater because it messes with my brain because they all look like they belong in the same realm but they're not because just like that's how she draws like that's her kind of you know when you look at a painting you can be like oh the artist always does this on it like her characters kind of all look like that so when this cover got revealed though I was actually like my interest was peaked I love all of the gold and like the flower that she's holding and it just I don't know I like everyone has been super super hyped for this book and I feel like Maybe that's another reason, too, that, like, I feel like by default they just want to put a Charlie Bowater cover on a book that they want to sell really well. Like, that it doesn't in any way, like, entangle with whether or not the book is, like, good or if it's just kind of, like, a traditional YA or whatever. It's just, like, they put it just randomly on all these covers that I'm, like, is there a pattern? And, like, I feel like it, there's that thing, too, in my brain of, like, hating things that are popular because they're popular. I'm sure, like, I, I have, there's no doubt in my mind, like, I have to be in some way thinking like that. But anyways, um, a celestial court shimmering with magic myth and divine intrigue. And I was lucky enough to get an arc and I'm annoyed. It's just everything's gotten away from me <laughs> that I haven't read the arc yet. I think it comes out this month too. So um, hopefully I'm not reading it too late then. Could you guys just pick a spot and stick to it? So I also plan on picking up The Whispers of War by Julia Kelly. This is a book that I don't know that I would ever buy in a store but um in case you aren't aware um <laughs> every YA or sorry not every YA every w w adult setting um adult setting 
every adult book that comes out set during World War II right now is a female spy thriller in some capacity. So I read one every once in a while to just see what's going on in the genre and like to see if there's any kind of relation to like the holds and everything. You know, the amount of holds we have on something like The Huntress by Kate Quinn is astronomical. Um, and this is one that just has um, a little bit fewer holds. The start of World War II looms over three friends who struggle to remain loyal as one of them sweep through... Uh, sweep... <laughs> oh wait, this is the author of The Light of Berlin. I still have not read that book either because I think it had a long <laughs> wait list. In August 1939, as British watches the headlines in fear of another devastating war with Germany, three childhood friends must choose between friendship or country. Erstenweil socialite Nora is determined to find her place in the home's office area precaution department. Matchmaker Hazel tries to mask two closely guarded secrets with irre irre irrepressible? irreplaceable, oh my god, you know what I'm trying to say, optimism. And German expat Marie worries that she and her family might face imprisonment with the internment camps, which we know lots of places did. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, like, I don't know that I've really found a lot of these books to be super unique or kind of different from one another. Like, I read The Huntress and it was just meh to me. But sometimes I find things like The Lost Letters of Paris, I think it was, by Paminoff, and that book is, like, still with me in my brain. I still have the arc of it. I want to get a physical copy of it, but I'm just, like, waiting for it to go on sale because it looks basically, like, the same as the arc because of the paperback. Anyways, that book is just amazing. So I'm like, maybe I'll find another one of those. So I check in on this genre thing every once in a while. So this is just that. I am freaking excited to be picking up Lobazona by Romani? Romina? Carval? No. Wait, what's the author's name? I was going to say Carval. Garber, that's why, because Stephanie Garber and Carval. <laughs> um, I really hope I love this because I've seen um, online, I think Wednesday Books is the publisher, and honestly, whenever I see a book is, is getting published under Wednesday Books, I'm like, oh, the publisher's actually going to put effort into the design. The cover will have a proper cover artist. They will do something with the underdust jacket. And I was not disappointed with Lobazona because they post online that they have, like, suns, on, or, like, or I don't know if it's, like, a crescent moon or sun, whatever, but on the front and the back, and they have different designs on it. They post it on their Twitter. It's beautiful so I hope I love it because honestly the cover itself is just gorgeous as well so I really hope I love this but also I think it's just like a very timely um to be a publishing these books as well as reading them because honestly fuck Trump um some people are illegal Lobazanos do not exist both of these statements are false Manuela Azul has been cram has been crammed into an existence that feels too small for her as an undocumented immigrant who is on the run from her father's Argentinian crime family. Manu, Manu is confined to a small apartment and a small life in Miami, Florida. Until Manu's protective bubble is shattered, her surrogate grandmother is attacked, lifelong lives are exposed, and her mother is arrested by ICE. Also, fuck ICE. Um, without a home, without answers, and finally without shackles, Manu investigates the only clues she knows about her past, a mysterious Zed embem emblem, which leads her to the secret world buried within her own. I'm also excited because this is a trilogy. I feel like a lot of books that deal with things like illegal immigration um, are standalones and contemporaries, whereas this one is, seems to be going into a different realm. There are like kind of three things that will immediately make me bond with people. A mutual hatred of someone or something, you laugh, but that is literally the basis of the majority of my relationships. Love of K-pop, because it's real niche where I live at least. As well as um, an obsession with true crime. There's that meme that went around when people were like, well, who are you gonna go, who are you gonna call if, or who's gonna arrest murderers, or who's gonna investigate crimes if we get rid of the police? And I saw some, I think, actually, is it my Facebook profile? If it's not, it used to be. Something like, someone responded back with a tweet, white woman with a podcast, man. So yes, I am a fan of true crime. And also I'm really excited for whenever it's done being released, because then I'm gonna binge all of the HBO series episodes things on the Golden State Killer, because I've read the book all be gone in the dark love Patton Oswald rest in peace his wife there Catherine McNamara and so I'm just been you know working through train crime and the first one that's kind of finally come available through my library because they have giant holds lists on them we're all really interested in murder apparently um, America's first serial killer Jane Topin and the making of a monster by Mary Kay McBrayer I'm really really excited about this also the cover is really really good really really good I like that cover a lot I feel like true crimes can be kind of wishy-washy or just like very like Huh? or like just nothing done with them. I really like the cover design of this one. It's really, really pretty. And yeah, I'm ready to find out murders. And also it's, it's kind of depressing when I look at like, this is a weird thing to be jealous of. America has such a weird and interesting and like so well documented kind of, of just like these 
of these killers, serial killers or like, you know, just like long term killers. We don't really have that to the same. Like we have like Luca Magnata and we had uh, Carla Hamoko and Paul Bernardo. But like we don't have that same uh, Bruce MacArthur right now. But we don't seem to have the same scale. And maybe it is because of just population wise and how we're spread out or like how well we hide it or something. We just don't seem to have the same number of that stuff. So I feel like all the interesting crimes I find, I'm always like, oh, they're American. But fun fact. I was in Berlin when Luca Magnata got arrested, like four blocks away from him. So that's like my fun little tidbit to throw it at dinners to make everyone uncomfortable. I am finally picking up Flamecaster by Cinder Williams Trima. I have been waiting for the audiobook to become available that I bought from my libraries. Honestly, the audiobooks were just super expensive, so I was like, you bet believe that I bought those and I'm gonna freaking use them myself. <laughs> um, they're like over a hundred dollars. I'm like, how? Your series is several years old. How? How are your books so expensive for libraries still? And yes, audiobooks for libraries. I've seen some of Cassandra Clare's stuff, especially when it right comes out, is 200 plus dollars. Not even shitting it. A burning vengeance, a blood-based curse, and a destiny's fiery hand. A, a wizard prince in exile, thirsting for revenge. A girl with a curse, striking back at a ruthless king. Together they will burn the kingdom to its rotten core. I know it's a quartet. Um, I think I bought all four for my libraries. I, I only own book one of the series though, so um, hope if I really like it, then maybe I'll invest in the rest of them. I think they did a cover change. Yeah, the rest of the series has a person on them. But I think they did the paperback of that. Either way. If I want to, you know, invest in them, I'll do that in the end. But um, I have the rest of them pretty easily available to me. So if I like it, then I will try and binge the rest of the series in 2020. It's not like I got anything else going on, like traveling or concerts, because fucking Rona. Okay, I didn't hear of this book until I saw the cover for its sequel. And I was like, what is this? Um, how Rory Thorne destroyed the multiverse. So I'm going to be, er, sorry, by Kay Eason. So I am, I have this board from the library. I'm really excited. It's going to be a duology. So the second book is about to come out, or at least has a cover. So it's coming out relatively soon. Um, so if I get invested, and I also really do like these covers. Uh, first in a duology that reimagined fairy tales tropes with a space opera, the princess bride meets, sorry, the princess bride meets princess Leia. And I saw that and went, hold the hell on. Why did no one tell me about this book? What the hell? Um, so, oh, there we go. <laughs> Rory Thorne is a princess with 13 fairy blessings, the most important of which is to see through flattery and platitudes. As the eldest daughter, uh, she has always imagined she'd inherit the fa her father's throne and govern the Interplanetary Thorne Consortium. Then her father is assassinated with her mother, and then her mother gives birth to a son, and she is betrothed to the prince of a distant world. When Rory arrives in her new home, she uncovers a treacherous plot to unseat the newly her, her newly betrothed and usurp his throne. That sounds awesome, and it really does sound like the Princess Bride meets Princess Leia, to be totally honest. There's very few times I feel like those, those like, comparisons are actually, like, even remotely correct. And then there's some times where they put them, and I'm like, why would you even compare it to those two books? There was zero chance they were ever going to compare in any capacity to those. Like, I literally saw some something be compared to, as, what was the book? Something was like, The Cruel Prince Meet the Night Circus. And I was like, do not ever throw those two together and then expect everyone to be like, five stars across the board, they're going to de facto compare them to those two series, which are so iconically loved. Like, why would you set yourself up like that? Anyways, I'm very excited for Unconquerable Sun by Kate, some Kate Elliott, I think it is. So I've been watching this since like before the cover got revealed. Um, and it was just blurbed as Alex a gender swapped Alexander the Great in space. And I was like, whoa, like, I, I need that. And then they released the cover and I was like, really? And especially with them being from Tor Publishing. Hi, Tor um, is extortionate in some of their pricing of their book. Their books are always several dollars more per book, unjustifiably, no matter the age genre, from every other author or from every other publisher. Um, and honestly, Tor is also really dickish to libraries. They delay releases for libraries and the pricing and everything. So I just generally don't like buying tourist content as a regular consumer because they are just 
that way in Canada at least. Um, so, and then I saw the cover and went, no, no, I'm not, I'm not spending money on that. Um, so my library got it though. So I am very excited based on the concept. I think it's supposed to be a duology. Um, and the reviews for it ha seem to be have, have been pretty good. So I had very high hopes. I just wish the cover wasn't so meh. I'm also kind of like, ooh, maybe if it does well, they will sell the rights to, in England, um, the UK, because they don't have it available on like Waterstones or anything there. So I'm hoping maybe if they do sell it there, they'll get a nice cover because UK publishers put more effort into their covers. Let's just be real. Perfect example that I found this week was The Sin Eater by, I can't remember the name, author's name, Megan something. And like the US cover is like just like someone holding a pomegranate. Like it's literally just someone's arm in a pomegranate. And then the UK drew that like had an, hired an illustrator and drew this like elaborate like heart wrapped in like, I don't know if it's a crown or something like that with some fruit, like kind of look, it looks like a heart wrapped, but also like a fruit bowl. And then they had this background design. I'm like, they're like the same price. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I am very curiously going to be picking up Ink in the Blood by Kim Smesh Smeshkal. I picked this up in, I think it was March in Edmonton at a used bookstore. <laughs> it doesn't look like anyone opened it, to be totally honest, like right after it came out. Um, so I picked it up for like half price, which very excited because it was um, $26 Canadian. It's one of those dumbass books. Um, HM HMH tends to do that as well. Um, they put $17.99 slash higher in Canada, meaning the bookstore can just price it at whatever the hell it wants to um, instead of making it like comparable anyways um my also I was also really excited because they have Ryan Grodd and blurb it Ryan Grodd doesn't seem to blurb a lot of stuff I love her Wolf by Wolf is one of my favorite series ever um Ink in the Blood I just believe there's supposed to be like magic in tattooing they also released the cover for the sequel before this book even came out um they did that with um Fable too I don't know why they did that either way the cover is awesome and I hope I like it honestly the effort put into the cover design I really appreciate that and like it's just when I look at it, it gives me Six of Crows vibes too, so I have a feeling that's playing into into my interest and excitement. Woe to the Inklings who cannot escape. Celia, San, and her best friend Anya are Inklings for the esteemed religion of Propheta. Using magic, they tattoo followers with beautiful images that represent the divine's will and guide the actions of the recipients. It's considered a noble calling, but ten years into the servitude, Celia and Anya know the truth. Propheta is built on lies. Imagine that, a religion doing that. Um, the tattoos ordered... The tattooing, the, no, the tattooed orders strip away freedom, and the revered temple is actually brutal, torturous prison. Shocking. Um, I'm very excited and I have high hopes. I really wish they would have put like this or something like this in red on there, but the spine is at least nice on this one. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully I love. I am also very eagerly going to be picking up Last Tang Standing. Honestly, I bought this because it's blurb as Crazy Rich Asian meets something else. Um, meets, Bri meets Bridget Jones Diary. I've never read Bridget Jones Diary. I've, don't hate me, never seen any of those movies. I don't even know how many of them there are. Um, a funny, irresistible debut, debut novel about the pursuit of happiness, surviving one's 30s intact, and opening up oneself. Um, I think it's like she's successful in her career, but her parents, um, Chinese Malaysian family, um, are kind of like, well, like, why aren't you getting married? Why aren't you having babies? Um, so I, I don't get that pressure from my parents, but I'm 28 now. And actually, my sister's the only one that's, she's engaged, but she's been engaged for like six or seven years now. But none of us are married, none of us have kids. And like, every time I open Facebook, someone else is having a baby. And my brain by default is like, oh my god, they had an unexpected, wait, they're, they're my age, they're probably doing that on purpose. Um, so, <laughs> hopefully I love this, um, in addition to the fact that my friend in the UK, it has a slightly different co cover, um, and she ended up getting a duplicate because I think Waterstones messed up a couple times on something and they kept sending her books that she didn't order or something. So she's sending that to me in the never ending list of books that she's sending me um, whenever they do come. So hopefully I love it because I'll have two copies. Okay, I am very nervously going to be picking up Night Spinner by Addie Thorley. So I got an arc of this a little while ago and I think it's come out since. But yeah, I actually own a physical copy. It was the, I picked it up at the same store. I picked up Ink in the Blood. Um, so, but I, I have an arc of it. Um, so it's blurbed as for fans of Grisha as an influence or retelling, a transforming of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Those are two very high things to peg your book up against. Um, and I did not like the author's first work. 
So um, it was another book that it's from Page Street. Page Street Publishing is expensive in Canada. Um, their books generally start around thirty dollars a book, um, which is like five to seven to nine dollars more expensive than other publishers in Canada. So I generally don't buy their physical books, but. At the, at the same store I picked up Ink and Blood, um, they had a brand new unused copy there that was someone bought it, read it, I guess the day it came out and g gave it in either way. Um, so I'm going to read it. I'm nervous that I'm going to be disappointed because I really, really like the cover. Um, Before the Massacre of Nereen, en Enabish was one of the greatest warriors of the Sky King's Imperial Army. Rare and dangerous night spinner, blessed with the ability to control the threads of darkness. Now and she now she's known as Enabla... <laughs> Enabish the Destroyer, a monster murderer, banished to a monastery for losing control of her powers and annihilating a merchant caravan. Guilt-stricken and scared, um, scarred, sorry, she tries to be grateful for her sanctuary until her adoptive sister, the commander, returns from the war front with um, a tantalizing offer. If she can capture the notorious criminal Temujin, whose band of rebels have been seizing army supply wagons, not only will her crimes be pardoned, she will be reinstated as a warrior. I'm going to take a wild guess that a romance involves or embellishes or goes from there um so yeah I hope I, I like I'm hope but I'm so nervous after how I felt about the first book because I went in with very high hopes on that one too let me be totally honest I haven't read the summary for that one the why it's just it's written by Cynthia Hand there's there's not much that she's put out that I do not like so I'm gonna give it a go I think it's supposed to be like a multi-generational like family story I don't think it's normally like something I would pick up if it was another author but the cover is interesting I like having the parallels which piqued my interest and it's Cynthia Hand and I love 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 the afterlife of what's it called what's it called oh I was gonna say the afterlife of Holly Black but I knew that wasn't right the afterlife of Holly Chase and then the My Lady Jane series so hopefully I love this and I'm just not gonna read the summary going into it I really don't care I'm also going to be picking up Angel Mage again by Garth Nix. This is a book that I think I tried to read in February. So I tried to read it, I think in, I want to say it was the beginning of February when I was in um, Ontario and Quebec for my conference. Um, and I just was having a hard time with a lot of, re of reading quite a few fantasy books actually at that time. Um, so I'm going to give it a go again. It's available for my library. So I'm going to pick up the audiobook and give it another shot. I just remember there was like, an angel either sent back in time or frozen in time gets like reawoken and like starts causing shit in the world because the world is like the opposite of what the angel remembers so it's been like a time a long time and yeah so hopefully I, I really like it because I know the left-handed bookseller is supposed to be coming out in the next few months I want to say and again I'm supposed to be getting a copy from the UK because the UK cover is so much nicer than the US one why do they keep doing that I am also going to be picking up American Predator the hunt for the most meticulous serial killer of the 21st century by Maureen Callahan I've been on hold for this for quite a while actually the names of notorious serial killers are usually well known. They echo in the news and public consciousness. But most people have never heard of Israel Key Israel Israel Keys, one of the most ambitious and terrifying serial killers in modern history. The FBI considered his behavior unprecedented, described by prosecutors as a force of pure evil. Um, he struck all over the United States, buried his kill kits, cash, weapons, and body disposal kits in remote locations across the country. I had heard the name, but I didn't quite know exactly everything about him until I saw that this book was coming out and I was like, oh, did a little bit of Googling. And now I'm back rewatching Criminal Minds, so I was like, it's kind of amazing. And then I'm rewatching Criminal Minds and was like, what's my hold on that book doing? Because I think it was like eight months long or something like that. Well, it's finally coming. So I'm going to be reading it now. After picking up The Naming and the Riddle in, uh, uh, what was it, July, I'm going to be finishing the series. So I'm going to be reading book three, which is The Crow, book four, The Singing, and then the spinoff, This is Carvan's um, own, I think it's a prequel story, I want to say. It's Kadvan's story. I just, um, I don't, I think it was his prequel story, I want to say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, so then I will be done the series and, um, I can't believe I didn't hear of the series growing up. I would have loved this series. So I'm also going to be picking up The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. I have actually, actually I own somewhere. So I actually own uh, the author's, uh, this is the first book I've read by her, The Deathless Girls. Um, I really enjoyed this book. It's also like stunningly designed, like holy crap. Um, and I read it and really, really enjoyed it. I like her writing. 
So the Mercy, this isn't actually, I think, published in Canada. Um, I got this from the UK. Um, and I think the Mercies actually did get published here. So um, I'm going to be picking it up. I honestly haven't really read the summary of this book. I just saw the name and went, I know that author's name. Where do I know it? And looked and was like, oh, I read her book. I did like it. All right, let's borrow it. Again, another one with a relatively long hold line because I don't know, people were just suddenly excited for her book. So um, I'm going to read it and hopefully really love it. I'm also going to pick up Diamond City, I think, by Florence Flo Florence Flores. <laughs> Francesca. Why am I saying Florence? Francesca Flores. Oh my god. Um, I kind of got re-reminded of this book when they announced the cover for the sequel. Um, I don't know that it has fantastic reviews. It seems very middle of the pack. I don't know that it'll be anything special my but I just feel like I should probably give it a shot. I really like the cover. Good things don't happen to girls who come from nothing unless they risk everything. Fierce and ambitious. Aina Solis, uh, as sharp as her blade, as mysterious as the blood magic she protects. After the murder of her parents, she takes a job as an assassin to survive and find a new family and those like her, the unwanted and the forgotten. Her boss is brutal, cold, with a questionable sense of morality, but he provides a place for people with nowhere else to go, and makes sure they stay there. Diamond City, built by magic, ruled by tyrants, in desperate need of saving, it is a world full of dark forces and hidden agendas, old rivals, and lethal new enemies. To claim a future for herself in a world that doesn't want her to survive, she will win a game of murder and conspiracy, or risk losing everything. Um, so it seems to have just like a, a lot of three stars, so hopefully... It's something, I mean, I say that, but I think, like, The Deathless Girls also has, like, a really low rating, and I freaking love that book. So I really hope I like this. I have, like, optimistically high hopes. And I think the last book that I have planned for the month is Court of Shadows by Madeline Rue. This is the sequel to House of Furies, which I read, I think, last December or so. It was snowy. I remember listening to the audiobook. Um, and the highways in northern Alberta here don't have, um, like, lights. So it was, I remember it was cold and there was snow and there was no lights and I was driving on the highway <laughs> at like six o'clock, five o'clock in the morning or something like that. So that was fun. Um, and so it didn't help that I kept hearing like the weird, like the audiobook for it is like very, like it's not just someone reading with nothing else done to it. So it was messing with me. But I picked up the second book from Book Outlet a little while ago and now it's available from the library. So I will keep working my way through it with the audiobook. And hopefully love it just as much as I was pleasantly I was surprised with House of Furies how much I enjoyed. So those are all the books that I plan on reading in August. Oh my god, can't wait for 2020 to be done. Um, yeah, those are my game plans for August. Let me know if you plan on reading these or what your August plans are. And um, yeah, I'll link uh, everything in the description box down below. I will make a Goodreads shelf with all these books on them and link that down below. Stay inside, wash your hands, Corona isn't a conspiracy theory, Black Lives Matter, what other shit sh is basic common sense but we have to keep repeating right now. Get uh, registered about in the states especially and yeah I'm gonna go get an animal cracker blizzard now because I'm 28 single and have no kids.